So what's the histology of the lung? If you get a microscope and look at the epithelium of the conducting airways, what does it look like? Well, largely, the conducting airways will have columnar epithelium. So that's a single layer of cells based on a basement membrane. They are oblong in shape. Then the nucleus tends to be at the base on the basement membrane. And then there'll be cilia projecting out the surface of the uh, epithelial cell. And the cilia are protein structures which allow mucus to move back up the airways and out of the lungs. And that is a primary immune mechanism for defending the lung against anything that is inhaled that should not be there. Underneath this layer of uh, squamous epithelium, there will be various submucosal structures, a little bit of muscle around the main bronchi, some fibrocartilaginous layers, connective tissue, etc. Interspersed in the mucosal layer, there will be uh, the occasional goblet cell, which produces mucus, and there are also submucosal glands, which produce mucus, which are shown in the, in the middle part of this diagram, with uh, an opening coming out into the epithelium from which mucus is secreted by the, the, the cells in the submucosa. As the airway goes, as you go down the airway towards the bronchioles, the amount of submucosa thins out and the height of the column, columnar epithelium becomes smaller and eventually you, you'll lose your cilia as well. If you were to look at that alveolar epithelium in more detail, it'd look like this. There'll be, as we described just now, an alveolus containing air. There's a type 1 pneumocyte there you can see, which is forming a very large surface area of the alveolus. Uh, there's the occasional type 2 pneumocyte with its synthetic uh, function. And then in between alveoli, you can see there's a small capillary with red cells in the middle, endothelial cell forming a very thin uh, uh, capillary wall. And this uh, is important, this structure, because of the, the small gap between the alveolus and the red cell in the capillary allows diffusion of oxygen from the alveoli into the red cells much more rapidly than it would be if there was a larger gap. The interstitium, which is in the middle, really is very thin in the lung and should remain so for good gas exchange. I've mentioned already the visceral pleura. So the pleura are two layers which are consist of squat, flattened squamous cell mesophelial cells, a single layer, monolayer, which covers the underside of the thoracic cavity, so the ribs and the muscles of the thoracic cavity of the parietal pleura, and the the surface of the lung with the visceral pleura with a small gap between the two. Now that gap has a little bit of fluid in it than normal people, but it's a potential gap that can be filled up with air or filled up with fluid during disease situations. The visceral and the parietal pleura merge at the hilo, where there's a hole in the visceral pleura created by this merging with the parietal pleura that allows entry of the blood vessels and the right and the left main bronchi into the lungs. The nerve supply to the pleura is from the intercostal nerves that we described earlier as lying underneath each rib. The nerve supply to the, the pleura which overlies the diaphragm is from the phrenic nerve. So the, there is a pleural space, but it contains in normal people a minimal amount of fluid, acts as sort of oil so that when you breathe things move nice and smoothly. The fluid forms from the bronchial intercostal circulation, so you get fluid oozing out from the lungs, from the bronchial circulation and from the intercostal circulation, but then drains down the lymphatics. And in, in general, that fluid, fluid formation and drainage is in balance, so the pleural space does not expand. But when you get disease that increases the amount of fluid coming out from the bronchial intercostal circulation, such as heart failure, or impairs the lymphatic drainage, if you've got abnormal pleura, for example, then you may end up with pleural fluid forming in the pleural space and accumulating there to cause what we call a pleural effusion. I've mentioned the hyala already. This is a diagram showing them. So the gray part of the lung is covered in visceral pleura, and the gap where the visceral and the parietal pleura fuse is right there in the middle of the medial aspect of each lung. And you can see the variety of blood vessels and airways that enter the lung and nerves at that point on either side. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. 
Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.